know, we found that our practice works best for productive agents. Mm -hmm. And and so the fact that this was uh, that was a fit on so many levels from strategy to leadership and commitment to uh, building a great team to the most powerful network, you know, it's it's uh, it's really exciting. It became a no-brainer pretty quick. You are watching the 10-4 at R4 Podcast, recorded live at Remax R4 2020 from the MGM Grand Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. In this episode, we discuss... First. With... Mike Schneider. Of... First. From... Durham, North Carolina. Now, here are your hosts, Jesse Peters and Michael Thorne. Welcome to the 10-4 at R4 Podcast. I am Michael Thorne of Remax Lifestyles Realty in Langley, BC. And my dear, dear co-host is Jesse Peters. I hope I'm the dear, like, I hope that's what I think you. You're welcome, dude. From Remax Executives in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. And this is our last podcast of Remax R4 2020. Oh, and it's been and exciting. So exciting. So many, like, incredible personalities and people coming in here that shared so much like when we look at it from a bird's eye view right yeah. some some very similar themes ran throughout that kind of really locked in with some of the major themes happening at r4 2020 here in las vegas nevada no doubt but of all of them this is the one i was most excited to get into oh oh <laughs> there the best well, that, that's the fun part of naming your company first is you often get to go last. <laughs> I learned that early on. It was great. Mike, uh, obviously a big splash uh, publicly uh, from the stage at R4 on an announcement that came, I guess, a couple months ago. That's right. Uh, the acquisition uh, of, of First uh, Remax, uh, acquiring First. Uh, and, and I'll be honest, when, you know, as, as two Canadian boys, hadn't, hadn't heard it yet. Um, and Jesse and I go around North America and Europe uh, teaching something called Video Boot Camp where we help agents uh, leverage video. And one of the big like aha moments for people is when I describe retarget retargeting video views. If you put out a video that says the five things you need to know about buying your first home in Langley, BC in 2020, and I get 75 people put into a bucket that have watched 75% of that video or more, there's a good chance that those people are raising their hands saying, hey, this content is for me. The difference, be and it's super powerful, super powerful. Yep. The difference is I don't know who those 75 are. I can retarget them, I can send them some more value, but I don't know who they are. And when I watched Kendall Bonner's video about first and her explanation of it, I went, well, that's what that is, but on steroids for people you already know. So Cole's notes, what uh, is first? I love that analogy. <laughs> so I hadn't actually made the analogy on the marketing front, right? Yep. Of, how do you create inbound? How do you capture mm -hmm. people and then, and then figure out where they are in the funnel? Because you, you have to target, right? Mm -hmm. um, what we found is so fascinating is that an agent has a primary asset, and that is their relationship network, right? Mm -hmm. You've got to build less marketing to get inbound, but most of the deals are coming from people you already know. Sure. Yep. The problem is we don't know where they live. We've got 3,000 of them. It's very hard to stay in touch with 3,000 people. And um, by and large, marketing, they're all on four different agents drip campaigns and mm -hmm. to your point we need to totally. do all the thoughtful marketing you guys are driving and video goes a long way mm -hmm. um, but as we started looking at what actually drives business because our whole company was focused on how do we help agents win more business from their network if you hadn't had a phone call with them or had a text message conversation or gotten into some form of conversation in the six months before and that could be over Instagram around a video right mm -hmm. but if you hadn't had a conversation in the six months prior to a listing almost no correlation to anything you're sending them You've got to get to a conversation. That's what marketing is for, right? Is to Absolutely. get down to that conversation. So we built a really simple product that has a lot of really, really complex data and, and cool stuff on the back end, but it's super simple. It gets your all of your contacts in one place, cleans them up, adds in property addresses so for the first time you can see where all of your contacts live. And the painful part of that is you start to see how many of the deals you're winning and how many you're missing. Mm -hmm. And so as you guys know, in the marketing front and lead gen, it's, it's very common to know, hey, this is my conversion rate. Yep. What if you had a conversion rate on your network? Exactly. And now we're going to have that across all Remax agents and be able to say, look, we're winning 20% of the deals in our network, but what if we can drive that to 30%? We're going to have a huge market share grab. And those aren't leads we have to go find. They're in our phone and in our email contacts. And if they're in your phone and your email contacts, that, that's not cold calling or cold cold creation. That's that's no. a warm relationship that, that has some s substance already there. So I just had the fourth agent come up to me that has signed up since yesterday when Adam made the announcement. Mm-hmm who's already got listing appointments next week. 
It's they literally they just went and took people that they hadn't talked to in four years, but they know yeah. who they are. They're going to recognize you, and they texted them or they called them. They said, "It's yep. so funny, you're ta you're calling me." And you know, one of the things about creating a really good real estate business we hear all the time is to have you know multiple funnels because any funnel can kind of turn off at any time. But here's what I know about a funnel: if I have no intention of selling for three or four years, I don't need you contacting me every quarter. You know what I mean? I don't need you right. in my back pocket all the time. But if I'm about to move, I want you in my back pocket, That's right. especially if you're an expert, expert. So you're basically saying, hey, everyone in my funnel, please raise your hand if you need me now, step this way. Everyone else who doesn't need me as much, I'm not going to annoy you. So not only do you win with the people that need you, you win with the people that don't don't want you at that very moment. And that's a game changer because we only have so much time. We only have so much energy and so much money to spend. And it's basically saying, here's who you need to focus on. Yeah, and then coming along to remind you and Love pester you that. a little bit and a little bit of the coaching and accountability. It can be a little bit painful, but we're going to beat you over the head a little bit that you haven't actually talked to these people in a long time. And if you don't do it now, somebody else is going to. So that's why we want to get you in that first conversation. But I think you're absolutely right. We've got to have the marketing funnel set up. But yeah. at the end of the day, it comes down to who am I going to talk to? And that's where your valuable time need, is really important. So exactly. if we can focus that, and, and to your point, one of the things that's hardest is when we think about our network, it's actually hard to think about where people are in that funnel. Yeah, right? exactly. The, the, the conventional wisdom, and it's working very well, is pick the people who are going to refer me business. Because whether they're moving or not, they like me enough to refer me. The problem is when we, when, when we just focus there, we're missing so many deals of people that are going to be selling. Mm -hmm. And so a quick phone call to people that have all the pressure on them to move, uh, it's amazing this is a new funnel in some ways. Mm -hmm. Okay, 700 data points-ish, give or take, I think was, yep. you know, based on me kind of doing some research, hearing it on stage, right? 700 data points. All right, so most people who boost the campaign or build a basic campaign are working off maybe three data points, right? That's right. Age, area. Income level or something like right? that. Right, and, yep. and, and obviously ranges, depending on yeah. the, the fair housing, it like mm -hmm. a little bit different rules in Canada, in Canada yeah. yep. versus, right? That's right. How do you go about 700 data points? How many data points have you actually worked through to get it to 700, that That's magic three-star number? Yeah, you'll see a lot of people throwing out data points and saying we've got 3,000, we've got 4,000. Right. Um, we actually have looked at thousands to figure out what actually contributes. And um, so we, we've gotten it down to things that really matter, things like demographics, mm -hmm. life event changes, mm -hmm. um, some of your, uh, obviously everything about the house. So yeah. it, here's a quick example. Um, if my wife and I are, are expecting our third kid, yep. which we were and that uh, flagged us, um, you know, if you, if you have expecting your third kid, but you've got a five bedroom house and X income, you might not be that likely to move if you're in a great school district. Mm -hmm, yeah. But that same person with that same life event living in a two bedroom townhouse, mm -hmm. making the same amount of money in a bad school district where your kids are coming up on school age, that person's probably five times as likely to sell in the next year. Sure. Mm -hmm. And that's the type of thing that this, com this machine learning can look at across the entire population all the time. You, as an agent, would know that if you spent enough time to get to know me and know what was going on in my life, you could intuit all those things. You just can't do it across 2,000 people. No. No. So let's let the computers do what they're good at. And so the AI is pulling that ac from across the interweb, not just social interactions on Facebook or Instagram or whatnot, just everywhere. Yeah. In fact, we, we found that, uh, that a lot of the online signals aren't very helpful. So most of this is actually, you know, we've partnered with some of the best data providers in the world and uh -huh. uh, we care about the data privacy and security. We've chosen sure. not to partner with others because they're not as... Uh, as secure or, or, and so what we're doing is we actually have, have, have that data across everybody across the US. We're exploring Canada right now and global, so we'll, we'll keep you guys posted. Um, but what we do is we have all that data on everyone. So when you sync your contacts, we're actually then mapping that to sure. everyone we're, we're tracking. Okay. And now did Remax see first uh, and, and purchase it and, and is trying to squeeze you in the direction of providing value in the real estate industry or was first built for the real estate industry? From the day one I started the company, we were laser focused on helping agents be more productive. And it was very clear that there was not enough investment. We raised over $11 million in venture capital to focus on this problem of how do we help you with your network? T tons of people helping on the lead side and mm -hmm. lead conversion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just not a lot of great technology built on how do we help you with your network? And there are unique problems there. 
And, and it's very interesting because we saw it from stage this morning, uh, 5.9 million transactions last year, 84 million leads. Uh, anyone that's been in the business for as long as I have or you have, we know that our sphere of influence and our past clients are the bread and butter, Correct. are the money being made. Uh, and, and, uh, and we wanna take care of those people. So if I were to spend any investment in, in knowing who I should be in front of, I would way rather be in front of someone in my network than an absolute stranger who's just looking for an agent. Because here's the difference. When someone's just looking for an agent, an agent will do. But if someone's already in my network and they're looking for me, that's that's something completely different. And just reminding those people that you do have a relationship, you're already there. I mean, if they're in your network and you know they're on the same baseball team or whatever yeah. it is, there, there's a relationship there. It makes that a whole lot easier. So does first then we get to the three star, right? It's a three star, not a five star. Three star cap. First of all, Bingo. why why three star? Because <laughs> I was like, okay, three yeah. star. Okay, gold medal or gold silver bronze was kind of wrapping my brain I like around that. There. Yeah, it's but good. like five star, you're used to all these. But like, why only three star? First of all, it may be more of a Great novel question. question. But why? You know, we we iterated through lots of different ways of explaining this and trying to get to something that that helped and made sense. At one point, we were telling you how how likely they were to sell. It was like 4.2 times as likely. Yeah. Oh my goodness, people are so confused. Why is this person 4.2 and this person is 3.8? And this now that's changed. Now it's, it's 4.2 like and 3.8. Uber, like, it's oh, like the Uber goodness. driver ratings. What did you what? do to get to 4.4? Yeah. 4? Tell me. <laughs> how much more time should I spend on my 4.2s and my 3.8s? Exactly. Um, so what we found was we wanted to get to something that was just simple enough that it made sense. Mm -hmm. And so if you just focus on those three-star contacts, what, what we found is that they're, they're two to three times as likely to sell. So you are th two to three times as productive right out of the gates if you just focus on the t those three-star contacts. Two -timer, three -timer. And so that's, that's really, really helpful just kind of out, out of the gates. The other thing that we found is when we kind of picked that cutoff and looked at what that meant for an agent's networks, um, uh, across the board, over 90% of our users will have o will have over 15 listings just in their three-star contacts this year. So imagine if you sign up for a product at $38 a month now that Remax has covered it, yeah. and you're going to be in front of 15 listings. Yeah. Yeah. Priceless. So before is. you spend any time on anybody else, let's get through those three stars. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, one last question uh, for you. Uh, um, a big acquisition two years ago uh, in Bouge, uh, a big acquisition this year in First, uh, and we've already interviewed the uh, Bouge people and asked awesome. the same question, but uh, do you foresee uh, an integration or, or uh, a pairing between those two moving forward? Absolutely. Yeah, and I think a big part of this is there's a lot of complementary uh, aspects here. We're, mm -hmm. we're solving different problems, and so uh, starting to pair that up. Uh, we're excited about helping with a lot of the contact management, clean up and augment, which we've we've worked on for four and a half years, and they're amazing on websites, right? Let's pair these different strengths and, and yeah. figure that out. Um, we've also invested a lot in mobile. Yeah. So, yeah, we want this to be a seamless experience, no question. Uh, and we're excited to bring, you know, a, a, I'm most proud of our team. If, you know, if you, if you look at how powerful this product is, that's because of iteration with agents over four and a half years and a phenomenal product and engineering organization more than it is uh, me, certainly. So we want to build lots of great products for, for Remax. And that doesn't surprise me because that's the way Remax is built. Uh, I've got to know some of the crew at Bouge. That's the way Bouge is built. So I'm not surprised that it's the humans that we're invested in. And that, on, on, and I said one last question. Am I going to go one more? <laughs> it seems like there was uh, uh, some interest in, uh, in, in first doing something really unique. So when it comes down to it, when we're biased, we love this company, uh, what was it about Remax that sort of felt like it was the right fit for first. Yeah, we were in the fortunate uh, space of having options. Yeah, um, and uh, from continuing to own our own destiny and raise more venture capital and keep growing to joining any of the big brands, and and uh, so we got to know a lot of the a lot of the different companies. And I'll say Remax leadership is really impressive. It is, uh, and the 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 big bets they're taking and uh, the long term perspective. Uh, the produ production of the agents. That mm -hmm. was a, uh, you know, we found that our product works best for productive agents, mm -hmm. and and so the fact that this was, uh, that was a fit on so many levels, from strategy to leadership and commitment to uh, building a great team to the most powerful network, you know, it's it's uh, it's really exciting. It became a no-brainer pretty quick. Now it's time for the R four Rapid Four. Okay, Mike, at the beginning of the podcast, we asked you to roll the dice four times. You did. Now, most of the guests on the podcast know us. 
known us for quite a long period of time, Actually, and so I wasn't surprised by the trust they showed absolutely. us. Absolutely. But Mike, we have just met you in person for the first time, yet the trust was there. It's amazing. It's hilarious because there's one number that says take our luggage to the, to the <laughs> oh boy. airport. Oh, boy. What have I gotten myself into? So, <laughs> so, Mike, what you've got yourself into is in Jesse's hands, he's holding 10 nonsensical, silly questions, numbered 1 through 10. And based on the roll of the dice, we are going to ask you four of them. Bring it. Mike's first uh, question is number 8. If animals could talk, which would be the rudest? Mm, squirrels. Oh. Squirrels. Why? I just, they just seem cranky and always taking the birds' food. You got a lot stuff. of squirrels yeah. in your world too. Yeah, they're just they're all over the place. Yeah, <laughs> gray squirrels, brown squirrels. Yeah. The gray ones are the worst. They're the biggest ones that look like some serious. They get real fat. Too. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Number one. Hmm. How long would you last in a zombie apocalypse? Oh, I'd last a long time. Oh, we we took the you team axe throwing. Yes. And I found I had an uncanny knack for throwing axes. <laughs> it was ridiculous. <laughs> at head height, it was at perfect head height. Unbelievable. It was like, this is so easy. Why Two is hand, this so other easy? Hand done, one like... hand, I was, it was ridiculous. So, so you nailed it a few times. Was that one of the first things you thought of? You're like, oh, oh I could, I, I've got I, a zombie I, comic skill set. I, I, no, I but this. now I put two and two together. <laughs> and I need to have that hatchet. That's great. <laughs> Number five. In 40 years from now, what will people be nostalgic for? Getting to drive our own cars. Wow. Oh, that's a good, good answer. That's correct. Uh, number four. Now, uh, yeah, go ahead. Ask him. Yeah, I, we I, don't know. I signed up. I signed yeah, up for this up. podcast. I don't know what, what, what's yeah, about to happen. Ask. So there's like this unknown because we brought in people that we, we know. kind of know. Sure. So, my friend, if you were arrested with no explanation... What would your friends and family assume you had done? Oh, wow. That's a tough one. <laughs> Remember your assume? privacy. The, everyone scrapes your data. They That's probably, right. <laughs> first, first could probably tell you what you've done before yeah, you've done I, it. Yeah, I have these, I have these flat, you know, worries about being Mark Zuckerberg in front of Congress or something. <laughs> I, you know, I don't know. Um, I don't think my friends and family would think that I had done any of that. But, um, yeah, that's a tough one. Maybe, maybe letting... My registration, my car laps or something. Oh, oh big okay. offender. Yeah. Man, getting, <laughs> uh, getting, uh, getting the details on some of these things <laughs> in, done on the right timeline, not my strength. Not my strength. Too bad if there was an artificial intelligence could tell you when it was time to renew. I'm sure there is, but I wouldn't listen to it. From now. You ain't going to be driving. <laughs> that brings us to the end of this episode of the 10 Ford R4 podcast with our guest, Mike Schneider. Thanks for joining us. My co-host is the savvy Jesse oh, Peters, and so I'm good. Michael Thorne. We'll see you in the next one. Over and out. That's this week's episode of the 10-4 at R4 Podcast with your hosts, Jesse Peters and Michael Thorne. Don't forget to join us next week for another episode. Thank you for watching. Turn